Good day to everyone. Welcome to a series of Dhamma Talk organized by Buddhist Sangha Youth of Thailand on WBTV of Wat Janawa. So it's our great pleasure uh, to uh, come back to our show and then we have a good opportunity to share the Dhamma, to share the experience with the audience. So today it's very, very uh, happy time, you know, to have a uh, venerable Samanera teams again with us. So, Dikarp, I'm happy to see you again. This Me is too. very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, Tim, uh, so I think it's uh, now it's uh, nearly, I mean, uh, the end of rainy season for the Buddhist monk or Theravada tradition. That's why we, uh, I mean, uh, the Buddha, uh, for, I mean, uh, allow the monk to stay uh, only in the one particular, I mean, accommodation, or we can call it uh, the place for a period of three months. So that's why for the Buddhist monk, we can move anywhere, just uh, stay overnight, uh, just only in the case of some, some case, for example, uh, monks are invited by lay people to give a Dhamma talk, to give Dhamma lecture, or even the, uh, their parents, I mean, uh, get sick, or even the, some of the, um, I mean, the dentures in the monastery, for example, danger by, I mean, uh, on, by fire, by, I mean, uh, tips for whatever, you know, this kind of thing. That's I think is uh, right now is uh, getting close, you know, to the end of the rainy season. <laughs> mm. So that's why I think it's uh, during our rainy season as a Buddhist monk or Buddhist, I mean, uh, uh, medicons, well, we are supposed to stay and study Dharma. Study Dharma does not mean we have to study in group alone, but we can also, I mean, uh, study uh, alone, not not study in group. For example, like a Dhamma education, right? Or uh, even the, some of the newly ordained monks or shorter monks, uh, monks of the three months, they ordained for three months, so that's why, uh, or even, I'm sorry, even the novice as well, they are supposed to study the basic or fundamental uh, Buddha Dharma. <laughs> so that's a, a kind of the education system in of the Sangha in, in Thailand. So how about you? I would like to put a question uh, firstly about you. I have heard that you have, uh, during your Vasa, you produce some books. Is, is that right? Well, soon I've been working on my next manuscript. Oh, really? <laughs> Great. And it's been really uh, a wonderful time. Uh -huh. My first experience with this three-month period mm -hmm. was with the, at the Chan Center at the Mission District mm -hmm. in San Francisco about 1973. 1973. Yes. <laughs> and I remember I was there a few weeks before the, the retreat right. and all of, them, all of the monks were very excited mm -hmm. about this period of time throughout oh, right. the year mm -hmm. where they were really not obligated mm -hmm. with except uh, as you mentioned under some certain specific conditions right. to leave and they were they they had an opportunity to actually spend a significant amount of time uh, working and appreciating right. the meditations that they were doing mm -hmm. plus the personal choices that they had made mm -hmm. And I think that it was, it was essential, certainly for Western people, certainly, yes, to learn the Dharma, which right. you uh, will study anyway, <laughs> everywhere. Yep. Uh, but it really does give the monks and the retreat people time to reflect on that choice, yeah. not just the information and not just the teachings, mm -hmm. but their own personal relationship to those teachings. Right. And without having that time, that quiet time, um, it really is m merely becomes academic mm -hmm. rather than inspirational. Right. And I think it's that inspirational t 
aspect of the teachings that endure. Mm. And uh, the monks that, uh, of course, uh, there were several monks that, that had done this for several years and understood how important that three-month period was in their meditational year <laughs> uh, because they were awfully busy yeah. during that other periods of time, mostly exactly. building, building temples yeah, and wandering something. around and giving people talks. <laughs> And so they were, it was a very good contrast mm -hmm. uh, to these people who were able mm -hmm. to do this. Right. And uh, I have done that on my own, wandering off into the desert and coming back later <laughs> as it goes. And sometimes it was three months and sometimes it was eight or nine months. Oh, nine months, that's right. But uh, that was out in a cave in the desert and I only knew it was a weekend because that was the only time when it was possible for a single mm. vehicle right. to kind of rumble along the road, which is about a half a kilometer away, and kind of get lost in the dust and the noise and the hills over there. <laughs> and uh, that was the only thing that uh, I knew that it must be the weekend. Right. Um, it was a wonderful time. Mm. So the same as uh, in the Theravada tradition, especially in Thailand. For the new monks, you know, for the new ordained monks, uh, actually we have this uh, uh, tradition, or or even we can say it's our custom, for the young uh, boys or even the young men, you know, to join the monastic life, uh, once a life in 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 the I mean uh, in the period or uh, during the time, especially before the rain retreat or even the, during the rain retreat. Uh, maybe about nearly 700 years, I mean, a tradition. So that's why uh, this uh, kind of the, the long tradition, but right now the society has changed a lot. That's why I make uh, some of them, you know, before used to become a monk during the Wasa three months, but right now maybe they turn to uh, uh, seven days or even 15 days ordination. <laughs> so that's it depends on the, the I mean external factors, especially uh, economy or uh, even the uh, the society very hectic and stressful. So they have to make money to earn money, make a living. Uh, worried about I mean uh, physical. Uh, living conditions, so that's why uh, this is a big, I mean, uh, not a kind of problem, but I mean, uh, if we understand the change, especially impermanence, the theory of impermanence, we can understand about this and how we can accept and adapt uh, this kind of tradition and make it, I mean, uh, valuable and precious. I mean, uh, in for the next generation, something like that, it would be okay. Well, actually, I think that mm -hmm. there needs some work needs mm -hmm. to be done in that regard. Right. In so far as a let's say an irrational commitment to uh, conditions that are no longer relevant uh, is partly the responsibility of the sangha mm -hmm. to appreciate that. And yes, conditions change, as the Buddha has said. Right. And that to be able to appreciate the changes and I know it's easy, you know, we're, well, my, not you, I'm old, <laughs> and it was, it's easy oh. to think that, um, that the old ways were better. I think that that's not necessarily the best way to appreciate this. Mm -hmm. It's just they're different. Right. And I know there's a lot of criticism about the fact that young people can't concentrate even long enough to say a single word. <laughs> I mean, they say dis and, uh, you know, and spell out words right. or whole sentences in single words. Right. Um, it's easy to decide mm -hmm. that that is a bad thing. It is more difficult, and I think it's more incumbent upon us to say, all right, what is the virtue of the busyness? Mm -hmm. What is it, in fact, doing or enabling us to do in order for us to take advantage of that. And mm -hmm. I think that's being overlooked. Uh, I think the fact that the children are engaged and busy mm -hmm. is in fact better than sitting around, you know, you know looking at the dirt. Mm -hmm. 
it gives them an opportunity to be dynamic mm -hmm. and look at Buddhism not from necessarily or not at least initially from a let's say a solitude point of view but from a dynamic point of view and I think taking advantage of that and saying all right this is time to learn the dynamics the exciting <laughs> part right and so that you can include that in your exciting life mm. now it turns out that's not what Mm -hmm. That's not traditional. Right. <laughs> and I know that, for example, if you have a hundred youth right. and that you do the traditional thing, mm -hmm. that many of them will come up and say they benefited from that and will be and that will be the truth. Mm -hmm. But it may turn all, also turn out that many could have benefited from a different approach or a right. different application exactly. that hasn't been considered. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be the postures. Um, there's many different postures other than sitting, standing, and walking. There's hand gestures and movement, and there's balance and centering postures right. that uh, are simply ignored, uh, and basically physical fitness. Um, I think the Buddha was physically fit. <laughs> he walked everywhere, right. but he, and he ate well, and he paid attention. Right. Um, his physical f uh, fitness was important. Right. Exactly. Uh, he, at the very least, as an example. Mm. Uh, and I think maybe it might be interesting to consider that this time with the young people, certainly when they're eight or nine or 10 years old, or ten, let's say 10 to 15 or 16, that the physical dynamic posturing and movement might be a way for them to integrate their you know, frenzied busyness in a more constructive and wholesome way. Mostly it's just unappreciated mm -hmm. because people who are older uh, haven't been able to have that experience mm -hmm. and because it's basically non-traditional. Right. And I'm just wondering mm -hmm. um, if some other application of a true Buddha Dharma mm -hmm. could be considered under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why uh, right now, I have heard that you compose some books, you know, <laughs> to, <laughs> I mean, uh, approachable, I mean, uh, to the, I mean, uh, modern people, especially uh, Buddhist humor, or uh, a kind of uh, some of the book. Uh, so, you have any plan to write? What What do you think about about the, the writing? I mean, uh, Buddha Dharma books. Well, uh, up until, well, let's say up until maybe 30 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Buddha Dharma, writing Buddha Dharma was academic. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly boring. <laughs> uh, and it was archaic. Uh, and this is the tradition. Yeah. Um, for the most part, the Mahayanas, the Tibetans, uh, and uh, the, the Thai monk, let's yep. say, I forget, it yeah. have have taken this writing and mm -hmm. writing and, and books as a vehicle mm -hmm. to look at the exciting or the dynamic part mm -hmm. of, of the Buddha's teachings rather than the academic memorize this and you'll be okay eventually part. Mm -hmm. And they have made wonderful uh, reading in so far as you get involved, it, if you're able to use words to create literature, to get a person's imagination involved in the process, mm -hmm. then you have captured that person in, I think, a very important way. Mm -hmm. And that is where writing skillfulness actually is important. Exactly. Um, you know, translating an academic piece of work Yes, it's difficult to do, <laughs> but again, it has extraordinary limitations on the application of the actual teachings. Yeah. For example, mm. you, the Buddha Dharma is a reflection of Buddha's experiences. So Buddha had the experience first. Right. Then he had to translate that experience into a whole numerous mm -hmm. sutras and dialogues yeah. about the experience. Right. 
Now it turns out, and I think you can appreciate this, a meditation experience can actually take only a few minutes mm. or even a few seconds to have an astounding insight realization. But to express that or to clarify that or to even explain it to mm. someone else could take a significant, significantly more time mm. and take significantly more skill right. to accomplish that. And that learning that skillfulness is a meditation in itself. Mm. Certainly, I think the Buddha had to learn how to speak well and properly mm -hmm. to help share what he understood to people who didn't understand. Mm. And I think that that particular meditation isn't p part of the tradition. Exactly. It is merely something that, well, maybe some people do on their own. Mm -hmm. And I think it's um, unfortunate that it's not appreciated better. Mm. or even more, or at all. Mm. Uh, but nevertheless, it's something that I've enjoyed doing. But my writing is more, has taken a, a condition or a character mm. that is fun for me to do. <laughs> when, I, when I write a, a paragraph or an interesting story, mm. for example, one in the, in the Buddhist tomb or about busyness. Yeah, what's this? It was uh, a monk said, um, uh, a student asked, well, how long should I meditate? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the monk said, well, a half an hour is usually enough unless you're very busy. Then it takes an hour. Mm -hmm. And that kind of capturing, that kind of idea or insight or the value mm -hmm. of meditation, not as a something you have to do, yeah. but something that is a, a process that is valuable to you. Right. Here's another example, for example, physical fitness. Personally, I like physical fitness. <laughs> I like doing exercises. But the half hour or so that I do exercises, during that exercise time, I just exercise. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it really doesn't benefit me mm -hmm. during that exercise time. Actually, it's difficult. You sweat, it hurts a little bit, and you uh, extend yourself to as far as you can go. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you're through with that exercise. But it turns out that six or seven hours later when you have to pick up something off the floor or you have mm -hmm. to climb up a ladder mm -hmm. or that you have to stand on a box or something, you find out that the exercise you did six hours before it, it was an extraordinary benefit mm -hmm. to your, your physical fitness to be able to do that. Right. And so the physical fitness, when you're doing it, isn't, isn't where the benefit is. Mm -hmm. It's the times afterwards is the benefit. And meditation is the same. Right. When you're sitting there, well actually in a cold country <laughs> with, cold. without any hair, it's, it's like, like five degrees. Yeah. And your head is really cold. <laughs> and your back hurts. Yeah. And your leg hurts. <laughs> and you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're sitting here going, what am I doing this for? This mm. is really hard work. <laughs> and what is the answer to that go on? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you work on it for an hour or you work on it for 45 minutes and you go, Okay, and it turns out later in the afternoon, you go, oh, that's the answer to the koan. Mm. But if you hadn't sat in the morning, if you mm. hadn't done the exercise, mm. then the answers wouldn't be there later. Mm. And so the benefit is doing the practice, doing the writing, mm. doing the meditation, doing the exercise, and understanding that the benefit comes afterwards. Yep. And that is where you can share it with others. Because when you do your meditations, when you do your exercises, you, can, right. you, can, you can't share it with anyone else. You're mm -hmm. doing it yourself, by yourself. And so it, it is appreciating the preparation mm -hmm. that goes into writing and sitting and mm -hmm. exercising that is a benefit later. Mm -hmm. But again, you still have to do it over and over again because you forget. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, that's why... Uh, I think it's uh, as you mentioned about the uh, experience uh, after we have practice and then we uh, apply the practice, I mean the reason, the consequence of practice into act, uh, I mean uh, into daily life or into the, I mean uh, to the people and for example like the Buddha, uh, after he said, I mean uh, he set himself as the, the, the first person I mean, uh, like uh, the researcher himself, as a researcher himself, 
and practice for uh, six years. After that, he uh, realized um, or attained uh, enlightenment, become we call the fully enlightened one. After that, he uh, never sit and silent and uh, no talk, no anything, don't want to share with others. But on the other hand, he eager to, I mean, uh, to help the people to see the suffering, the dukkha of the world. And then that's why I think it's a, that's a experience. Uh, right now, it's moved from the Buddha, I mean, ministry or mission. And then uh, after his death, the uh, Arohan, or the Arohan, the, the, the saints one, uh, I mean, uh, continue this tradition and help to, I mean, uh, uh, remember or memorize the Buddha word from uh, generation to generation until the time of King Ashoka. And at that time, we have the system, I, I mean, uh, about three baskets of Pali Kano and in Sri Lanka, in, in Terwat tradition in Sri Lanka, the monk, you know, I mean, uh, decide, make, de make decision, you know, to write down into the palm or ula leaves. And then until right now, or even in modern time, we have like, like a CD-ROM, you know, record the Buddha <laughs> words. That's a, uh, right now, I think it's a more and more monks or even the writer like you, you know, try to I mean, I get uh, some points from the Buddha teaching uh, into the modern, I mean, uh, circumstance and make it, I mean, uh, easy to the modern people to understand and appreciate the Buddha Dharma. That's a great idea. Like uh, in my hand, <coughs> for the end of the program, yep, I would like to, I mean, uh, conclude in Thai and also as well, I would like to I mean, I introduce some book, even some of the audience, you get used to this. <laughs> but uh, that's why I think it's, uh, you can see the real and then you can understand more about the, what the Venerable Jim has, I mean, uh, share with us. So this is a kind of uh, Buddhist uh, humor, right? Right now in our centers, uh, especially Buddhist Sankha use, we try to produce the I mean, uh, the books or booklets, you know, uh, uh, publications uh, through spread or to disseminate uh, Buddha Dharma, like uh, Buddhist humor is a great idea, written by the, as you know, very well, uh, Venerable Jim. <laughs> uh, so the next one is like the entire for the Son Lok, Sriti Lafiti Son Lok Hai King or even both in Thai and English. And this as well, it take me to the temple. You know, this archives of the book for the student in general, or even someone who take interest in, in English, in temple, or even in Buddhism. And then uh, you can uh, make application of, of this uh, into the, your career. For example, as a tourist, uh, as the kite, you know, tourist kite, you can use it. Or uh, even for the one who work with the uh, foreign, uh, foreign company or even contact with the foreign visitor, you can use this kind of book, you know, to help the foreigners. Uh, even the last is Dhamma Talk, as you are uh, familiar with this. So that's why right now in our center we have the four uh, books, a complete book already in our, in our hand. So in the future, I think it's, uh, we will have more and more books and then composed as well by a uh, venerable team. So the great idea. So right now, let me conclude in Thai. ขอเจริญพรญาติโยมที่กำลังรับชมรายการธรรมทอกหรือว่ารายการธรรมภาคภาษาอังกฤษอยู่ <coughs> ซึ่งขณะนี้ก็กําลังอ่าสนทนาน่ะได้สนทนากันมาแล้วนะฮะในเรื่องของอ่าการเข้าพรรษาได้สอบถามในเรื่องของการเข้าพรรษาซึ่
ว่าเป็นเวลาที่ตื่นเต้นและเป็นการที่จะได้ฝึกฝนสติสัพชัญญะในการที่จะเข้าใจในเรื่องของการใช้ชีวิตซึ่งก็ถือว่าเป็นโชคดีของท่านนะที่มีโอกาสได้มาบวชและท่านก็ได้แต่งหนังสือด้วยช่วงนี้แล้วก็ทำโปรเจกต์หลายอย่างนะก็ท่านก็ได้อยู่คนเดียวมีโอกาสที่จะคิดในการที่จะนำหลักธรรมมาแบ่งปันประสบการณ์กันทางนี้ทั้งนั้นก็ขึ้นอยู่กับว่าเราได้ปฏิบัติพอปฏิบัติแล้วก็นำประสบการณ์นั้นมา,มา,มาเผยแผ่หรือมาแบ่งปันร่วมกันนั้นก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่สมณีจิมนะได้ทำอยู่หรือแม้กระทั่งในเรื่องของอการที่การที่จะปรับธรรมะให้เหมาะนะฮะกับวิถีชีวิตของคนสมัยปัจจุบันก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ควรทำและเราจะต้องอมองดูพระพุทธเจ้าว่าแม้พระองค์จะตัดสรู้หลักธรรมแต่ว่าการที่พระองค์ได้มีพระสูตรในพระไตรปิฎกหลากหลายซึ่งบันทึกถึงประวัติของพระพุทธเจ้าที่ได้สนทนาธรรมในที่ต่างๆนั้นพระองค์ก็มีหลากหลายรูปแบบและก็ปรับให้เหมาะกับจริตอัธยาศัยของอสัพพสัตว์หรือเวนัยสัตว์นั่นหมายความว่าจะต้องอมีการปฏิบัติให้เหมาะให้สมกับเวลาสถานที่บุคคลนั้นถือว่าเป็นกุศโลบายเหมือนอย่างที่สามเณรจิมนะได้กล่าวมาก็ถือว่าเป็นการแบ่งปันประสบการณ์ในช่วงวันเข้าพรรษาและการทำงานนะในช่วงนี้ก็ต้องขอขอบคุณโยมที่ชับชมรายการและจันจิมโอเค I would like to thanks v e r b a n t i m Thank you very much for your uh, participation and uh, my name is uh, Pramaha Sompong I would like to thank the audience for your viewing. So, any comments, any question, please let us know to improve our show, our next program. And if you have uh, any or take interest in our activity, or even you want to donate, you want to share, experience, whatever, you can go to the address below. Uh, as I will put you later. So, thank you very much. See you next time, same time, same place. Until then. <laughs>